how are you working differently with, with types and groups? And well, besides everything, which is not a very interesting answer, um, I, I would say the main thing is I went through an evolution in my work. So my, my you, you could sort of say that my first work was 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 based on momentum. So my first company was called Momentum. And it was just, if you can get into action, momentum will carry you. So I noticed this. And so we just worked with getting people into action. And that helped people get into action. It was very effective. Then I started noticing, well, yeah, but if they're in totally useless action, it's not really that helpful for them to have momentum. So, so my next company was called Behavior Changes. And it focused on changing behavior. And it was, at times, more therapeutic than coaching. Um, and, and I was really into NLP and the psychology and, and, and really working. We did great things. We got rid of phobias. We would you know, help people with public speaking fears and, and do all this kind of fun, exciting work. But I noticed that fundamentally, I had a group of largely miserable people who no longer had phobias largely miserable people who no longer were scared of public speaking, and largely miserable people who were more effective in business. And that didn't seem to me to really be what I wanted for myself, let alone what I would want for my clients. And so when I came across the principles, I, I saw the possibility that it didn't have to be that way. You didn't have to settle for, you know, well, life's hard, but at least I can do this. Or, or life's hard, but at least it's not as bad as it used to be. Um, and and I really found for myself what it was like to not be a, a, a recovered depressive, but to actually to be happy, and to not be a um, you know a I, I used I, I used to think of myself as a successful victim, like it was nothing to do with me, but it happened to work. And and to actually see that there was an intelligent unfolding behind what was working. That in, in my best moments, in my most successful moments, there was something coming through me that I didn't realize I could rely on. I didn't realize it was always there, not just when I got lucky. And so for me, the, my personal experience was then with the principles was saying, oh, there, there is actually something solid that I can rely on. I didn't have that. In fact, my whole business was built on the most useful lie. And I didn't feel bad about that because I thought that was all there was. So, hey, if it's more useful to pretend that you're good at something than bad at something, why not? You know, if you're going to make stuff up, make up good stuff. And, and there is a point to that. But if you see that there is um, a more fundamental truth behind that, that there is a foundation from which we can operate, that there is this deeper intelligence that is always available to us, that that we're creating via thought all the time, not just when we're trying to. And, and, and the phrase that I, I've been using a lot lately is the innocent misuse of thought or the innocent misuse of the gift of thought. Because I see, that's what I see more and more is really going on. Is people don't understand the power that they wield. And so they're knocking things over. It's, it's like if your arms were longer than you thought they were. And you're knocking things over and you don't mean to. But at some point, you get used to your arms, and, and, and then you're okay again. And at some point, you start to kind of come to terms with this gift of thought, and, and you knock less stuff over, and you're more able to navigate elegantly. And, and there's this guiding principle of mind behind it all, which, which means you don't have to step in and figure it all out. And, and for me, that's been revelatory. I haven't answered your question yet, so let me try to do that. How it's changed my coaching is recognizing that there's a very limited value in working with the output of thought. So somebody comes and they've got a problem, but they've got the problem because of the way they've been using the gift of thought, because of their misunderstanding or understanding of mind and consciousness. So instead of working on the output, we go back and we look at the, the, the machine. We, we look at the oven instead of the cookies. Because... When people understand the oven, they bake better cookies. Um, when people understand the machine, it outputs better things. When, um, you know, I often use the analogy of if Bill Gates came to you for coaching and he had amnesia, and he came for business coaching, 
Well, in the old days, I would have shared my strategies for success with them. You know, now I'm inclined to wake them up for this amnesia. Um, and, and just show, show people what's really possible and what's really going on behind the scenes. And it's exciting because when people start to wake up to it, it's, it's like, you know, it's thrilling. It's thrilling for them. It's thrilling to watch. And, and then you get to see the knock-on effect in their businesses and their lives.